creatine, I love creatine. It still perpetuates the whole bloating thing. And even when I suggest it to people, they say, oh, but I feel bloated and then they don't want to take it. I, uh, most people that actually dissipates, right? It's drawing a bit more water in, but that's a good thing into the muscles. And then you kind of like get used to it. And as long as you don't load and things and you start with a lower dose. One thing I have noticed I'm curious about is that if I take creatine in a big glass of water, then actually that feels fine. But if I try and add creatine into, for example, a protein shake, and there doesn't seem to be enough liquid, that's when I would experience abdominal bloating. Can you explain? Because creatine and bloating is like a big thing for, for women. The best way to take it. Yeah, so there's a few things to unpack there. If you were just getting plain, unflavored, creapure creatine that has that's instantized, and you put it in a big glass of water, you should have no issues whatsoever. When we start adding it to like a protein drink, protein and amino acids also help pull water into different spaces. So then you have creatine and the protein competing for that same amount of water. So you will have to add some more water or drink something else with it. When we start talking to women who are like, I can't use creatine, it causes bloating. It's like, okay, well, what are you using? What brand are you using? Is it flavored? Is it not? Are there flow agents and fillers in there? Because when you start adding other stuff to the creatine, those are the things that cause gut irritation and bloating, not the creatine itself. So when we start unpacking why we're seeing the bloating, we often bring it back down to let's start with one and a half grams and work our way up to five. And as we're doing that, we want to see what the tipping point is of how you're using it that might cause the bloating. Do we need to have more water? Do we need to mix it with um, caffeine or, you know, what are we doing here? So we can really prescript it down. And the one big thing I tell every woman is you want to make sure that you are buying something that is unflavored so that you know there are not any fillers, flow agents, other strange, crazy things in there, because those are the things that tend to be the biggest gut irritants. So let's stay just like exercise, quality over quantity. So when we're talking about our supplements, we want quality over the flavor and the quantity of the stuff that's in there. Mm. And actually, when you have Creapure in just plain water and it's unflavored, it doesn't really taste of anything. It's actually doesn't. quite easy to drink. Yeah, it is. It is. You might have yeah. a little graininess at the very bottom of the glass, but, but that's other than that, yeah. And that, are you, have you, um, there's a lot of people talking about high dosing creatine. I had Dr. Darren Kando and, you know, mm -hmm. know Rhonda Patrick's talking about 10 grams a day. What are your thoughts about, you know, increasing that dose? It seems to be more for brain benefits that people are talking about it or bone prevent sort of preservation. Have you been experimenting that? Have you been using that with yourself, with your athletes? I've been using high doses of creatine for many years for jet lag. And because if I'm traveling, then I, my brain has to be on because I'm doing conference presentations or podcasts or whatever. It helps with that when you're completely fatigued and you need focus, it all comes down to brain energetics. Like your brain is a fast energetic user. So it means that you're using a lot of ATP, CP, glucose, all of those um, fuels that are required for very fast metabolism. So if you're bringing more creatine in and saturating more of the tissues and you have more creatine available for brain metabolism, it helps the brain focus and function. It also helps stabilize mood because it helps with uh, moderating our neurotransmitters and how they might surge or dump. So it's really important to understand why you would be using a higher dose. The thing about the higher dose that's out there is the research has been done on 0.35 gram per kilo. So when you're looking at a 60 kilo person, that equates to about 18 to 20 grams. But when you start scaling that, that dosage is different depending on body weight. And that's not out there. So yes, high dose, we see it's really effective for cognition, brain, helping focus, reducing fatigue, helping with mood. We know that creatine being part of the fast energetic system is also really important for muscle and bone development. So all of those things are helpful. So now that we're starting to see it out of the bodybuilding set and really investigate creatine for health and longevity, we're starting to see these different dosages and how they affect the body in a positive way. So I wouldn't recommend just all of a sudden going from your five grams to your 20 grams, because <laughs> then you definitely will have bloating and all of the side effects that you hear about. So it's a stepwise increment, knowing that it takes time to saturate your body anyway. So you might as well take the time to build it up. Yeah.
Yeah, and maybe splitting it, right? Five in the morning, five yeah. in the afternoon, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. 